I believe every golfer should be using one of these clubs. It's a hybrid. Lots of golfers need a hybrid in their golf bag. I'm gonna tell you why. So as we know, golf is a particularly hard game. For the men at the moment, the current handicap worldwide is averaging round about 15. And for ladies, it's averaging about 27. And probably one of the harder aspects of the game is driving and playing our longer clubs, i.e. maybe a four iron, a three iron if you've still got one, and God forbid, a two iron or a one iron if you are using those. But that's where the hybrid comes in. And I think a lot of people should be using those. And there's three reasons why we should be using those. But what is a hybrid before we actually delve into that? The sort of caught in between an iron and a wood in the aspect that when we look at the sole of the club, it's not quite as big as a wood and it's not quite as shallow as an iron. It's sort of sitting somewhere in between. When we look at the face profile of them, again, it's not quite as deep as an iron, but it's not quite as shallow as a fairway wood, somewhere in between. And then the actual depth of the club, the actual size of the head, again, is somewhere caught in between there. If you had maybe a game improvement iron versus your five wood, it sits somewhere in between there. What they do have though, is very similar lofts to maybe a three iron, a two iron, also a five wood, a seven wood and things like that. So they do come in handy because what it means, it's just a sort of slightly easier way for this golf club to launch up into the air. And that's what brings me to my first point to why I think a lot of golfers should experiment with having one of these in the bag. And that is teeing off with them. So I think a lot of people can benefit from them because what these clubs are designed to do is that when we're addressing the golf ball, it looks quite forgiving out, actually placed in behind it. And then because of that sort of nature of the club face not being quite as shallow, but a lot shallower than the iron, it's gonna be able to actually just get underneath the ball a little bit easier. But the big thing with them, obviously having that that iron-like loft in terms of your three iron, your two iron. They're able with this sort of flatter, shallower sole here to position weight around and a bit more back. And also with this smoother bottom, it's able to actually just glide. So it's a great thing that I know a lot of people struggle off the tee. So if you were struggling with your driver, it would be a great one to have that you could just place in and know that maybe this club, yes, it's not gonna go as long, but it's a lot easier to actually just get away and actually pop up off the tee, whether it's off a tiny tee peg or even just off the deck, it's actually easier just to start to launch it a little bit more in the air. They're also as well, they're very, very forgiving because again, of how they're able to position weight around the club face down more towards the bottom and the back of these clubs. And also having that little bit more loft than your driver, what you're able to do is actually get a little bit more spin on it, which is gonna help you launch it into the air a little bit more, but also with those, those not centered strikes and comment down below, I would imagine that some of you are having one of these that actually become your driving club. But for those mid handicappers, like I said, the average being 15 and 27, we're gonna see a lot of golfers that are up above that. It's probably a club that you could rely on if your driver's not really going to plan, it's one that you're able to, whether you just don't quite catch it and you get it a tiny bit heavy or you get it a little bit thin, it's actually still gonna work itself up into the air. Even that one, I've actually struck that, we can see here, a little bit low heeled and I'm down the center of the fairway. I'm a good 220 down there now. And it's one that I think off the tee, if you're really struggling, I think it's a club that could really maximize your game because yes, you want to get your driver working, but also having this club that you could fall back on. I think having a, a three wood that I see a lot of people think that when, oh, my driving's not going to plan, I'm gonna use my three wood. There's no stats. And even when I've used my shot scope and looked at the actual percentage of fairways hit and the distances and things like that between driver and three wood, there's not much difference. It's not, it's actually proving that driver is actually going to work better so if you're really struggling actually dropping down into something like a hybrid like this is going to be able to give you an actual chance of getting the ball into play oh that one felt good that was a nice golf shot yeah so i think if you are struggling off the tee 
that is number one reason why you should potentially be looking to have one of these in your bag. Let's go and have a look at another reason. That wasn't a very good shot, was it? And that's another reason why I think a lot of golfers should be using a hybrid a bit more. I'm still seeing a lot of people with three five woods, and I think five woods is just about okay. But I see a lot of players that maybe when they're struggling a little bit for distance and they're playing their normal golf course and maybe par fours now are getting to the point where they can't reach them in two. They're tending to use fairway woods to try and then get down as far as they can to maximize their distance. That's all well and good, but if you don't absolutely catch that three wood, that five wood perfect, you're gonna see shots like that. And the amount of times that I see people with a duffed three wood, a duffed five wood, and they think, oh God, I've now got to go and do that one again, is quite a lot. And that's like I say, where this hybrid comes in. The beauty of this one, off the fairway or even just into um, a little bit of semi-rough, or even when you're getting lies that are a little bit something like this, where again, we know that as maybe a higher handicap golfer, accuracy isn't going to be our premium so we're probably not going to be in the fairway every single time we get a hybrid club and they come be very they become very versatile from that team position when it's teed up to now actually getting here on the fairway what we want to try and do is maybe try and hit it a little bit more like an iron because again with that slightly shallower face that slightly shallower sole it's going to give us the ability to pop this golf ball up in the air a little bit more as opposed to having to try and pick it or lift it is what i hear a lot of the time from people when they're using fairway woods if they try and actually play the hybrid a little bit more like their iron swing it will then just actually send it launching up into the sky a little bit more so something like this where it's sat really nicely i now know that i want to play it just a little bit back in my stance maybe about a ball or two back but i'm just looking to try and actually take a little bit of a divot i'm not really looking to try and take it up and sweep it absolutely perfectly and even there a little bit skinny and it's actually got up into the air somewhat and actually launched a little bit more and again then when i hop over into something like this where the club would be nestled in behind the golf ball and a lot of time i would see a lot of players with this one maybe taking that three wood and the lie wouldn't be that good and it actually isn't going to gather up that well as where with this sort of compact design behind it it almost gives it a little thud and digs it out of that turf there so they're they're fantastic in this sort of lie as well so from a fairway position it's easier to get it up or from a um roughed position as well easier to get it up with that one just pops it up out of the rough and there we go it's just nicely sent from there so from t to fairway we start to see all of a sudden even with not fantastic strikes sometimes they're actually easy just to get up in the air and i think that is a huge thing that a lot of people will need let me tell you another third and final reason why I think you should probably have a hybrid in your bag. <sighs> Yet again, another poor chip. Ooh. And that is probably why golfers should also have a hybrid in their bag. They're very versatile and that was a very less stress shot than that first chip I was trying to play. Now, obviously, there's going to be circumstances where you can't play a hybrid for a chipping club. If I was down in a dip beyond there, where I'd have to get some real loft on it, it's not going to be feasible to try and play it with a hybrid. But they do become very versatile for people who would maybe find themselves just off the green here, and you would want to maybe use a putter, but this sort of rough grass would prevent you from actually getting a good roll on it because it would get it snagged up on there because of that initial little bit of loft that the club has it's going to lift it it almost acts like a chipper and chippers are you know if you're struggling with your chipping are really good clubs to fall back on but they've got that little bit of a stigma about them as where 
if you actually adopt a, a putting like stroke with your hybrid and a bit of a putter like setup because of the makeup of the club with it having that slightly smoother and shallower sole and the shallower face it will able, be able to actually just glide through little rough spots here and we'll see things like when we see the open being played on links courses when there's undulations in the green and the um actual fairway and fringe rolls into one almost the great way is just to get that ball rolling and actually being used and we see it all the time even by the pros they just nudge it along and let the little bit of loft lift it out and it takes away like i said earlier a lot of the stress because if i stood here with a lob wedge maybe you're that player who's thinking i'm going to duff this i'm going to fat it i'm going to thin it as we're here i know that i can make a pretty simple small stroke and don't have to do anything overly complicated and I can actually just pop the ball out and let it trundle up along. I mean, that is just simple and it's probably better than most chips I would ever play if I stood here with a bag of balls. And it's just all from that one club. It's just so versatile. So when I think of the hybrid, I do think it is a club that every golfer should have. Now, some circumstances may prevent you actually from wanting one of these. You might want to get a driving iron because you've got quite a high swing speed, but that's up to you. But if you're like most golfers, I think this is a club that could really help you out in a lot of situations. Lots of makes and models out there, lots of adjustments. You could get a couple of them to replace your long irons, but you could have one that's gonna be more of your driving club, one for the fairways, one that, like I say, will help you with a little bit of chipping as well. But overall, a club that I think, if you haven't tried one yet, I think you should be experimenting with one in your bag. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in your next lesson.